I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard. Welcome and thank you for being here at our uh, Senior Resource Center of Brevard Community Information Event. With the help of our friends here at Zon Beachside, uh, we started the Senior Resource Center of Brevard probably three or four years ago. Uh, and the idea was to get information into the hands of people that will help them develop their aging plan. Now, helping seniors of Brevard ourselves, we're a 501c3 Florida nonprofit founded by Joe Steckler. Joe is the guy who created, uh, th they call them still to this day, Joe's Clubs for the Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation. That's our Joe Steckler. He's a retired Navy captain who can't stay retired. He is uh, 88 going on 89. And uh, he is our fearless leader for all things Helping Seniors. But when I met him, because Helping Seniors of Brevard has been around since 2011, right? So, so when, when I first met Joe, and I'm going to tell a story on Nancy because she's known Joe even longer. But um, when I first met Joe, he said, I've learned a lot with the work I do with Brevard Alzheimer's. But I've realized seniors have challenges beyond just memory care issues. And I want to create a nonprofit that helps get information in the hands of the seniors and their families so they can make good decisions about the things they need to do. And so that's why he created Helping Seniors of Brevard. So for 11 years, whatever, 12 years now, we've been answering the County Senior Information Helpline, which is a free call at 321-473-7770. And we get calls about everything. Nancy will talk a little bit more about that as we go along today. But we help people, they call up, it's, sometimes it's the seniors, sometimes it's the adult kids of seniors, sometimes it's a neighbor concerned about a senior living in their neighborhood. But I'm always impressed with how much our little small organization is able to help. Because a lot of times, I always use this term, aging by definition is on the job training. The best we can hope to do is study a little bit, try to get ahead of it so that we have some ideas of how to hit the things that, that come up on us. So Joe Steckler, our president, has always talked about a thing called an aging plan. So we live in Florida and we get hurricane plan. You don't want a hurricane, but you want to be ready in case one is coming near. Aging plan is the same idea. It's having an idea of what you do when you're confronted with different things. So this year for Helping Seniors of Brevard, we set up our theme. We just called it, to, to be sort of fun with it, we called it Helping You Get Your Ducks in a Row. So throughout the year, we have uh, been talking about um, we have been talking about things that uh, will help you get those things in order. So we started off the year. We had Tyler Runte, who is an attorney with uh, the law firm of um, Amy Van Fossen, and she came and talked to us about paperwork and the reason why paperwork is important. And it's really something you do because you love your family and because it gets very expensive and very confusing for them if you don't have all those things together early on. So if you weren't here for that or you want to catch it, again, it's out on our Helping Seniors uh, YouTube channel, Helping Seniors uh, webpage at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Um, or you can find it on our Facebook page. Then we had, as we were just talking about a minute ago, we had Beth Courtney. She's a financial planner with her own company called Financial Cornerstone Group, and she came in and gave us five tips that we should be thinking about financially. Uh, last month, we just had fun. We, we had Chris Morris with our uh, Helping Seniors Travel Club come in and talk about, as a senior, you can travel, and there are ways to do it safely, and you can go with groups and all kinds of things like that. And then also, this month, we're moving forward in our topic. And so if you saw your copy of Senior Scene Magazine, we have some copies here for you today if you don't have one. But our theme this month was staying at home safely. A lot of us say, hey, listen, my plan is I want to age in place. I love my home. It's been home for this many years. I really want to be safe there, and I want to enjoy it there. But as we get older, experience is teaching us that there are things that we want to look at in our home that make it safer. So, you know, some things are kind of obvious. Maybe there's a point that we put grab bars in or things like that. There are things that we don't often think about, uh, but we should. Like if we have a nice maybe carpet on the floor, but it's a loose rug. we got to think about trip hazards. we got to think about things like that. Then there are things about just home safety. You know, what are the things that you do that keep yourself at home secure? And there's so many advances and so many things that we're going to be able to talk about. So Tracy Graff, who is a, um, 
uh, a registered nurse. She has a company called Avid Home Care. She was not able to be with us today, uh, but she sent us a wonderful presentation. And so I'm going to introduce my colleagues here, and together we're going to try to walk you through her presentation and then add some things. So I want to talk for a moment about Nancy Deerdorf. Uh, Nancy, wave your hand so everybody knows Nancy there. Uh, Nancy was part of Helping Seniors before there was a Helping Seniors. So she goes back working with Joe and helping Joe uh, back in his Brevard Alzheimer's days. She comes to us 33 years of registered nurse experience. She ran one of the area's largest home health agencies for years and years and years. She's been on the board of directors for Helping Seniors uh, since Joe started the organization, stepped down so that she could join us full time as part of our team. So she is now the operations director for Helping Seniors. She's the one that's in charge of everything that goes on with the, uh, with the uh, Helping Seniors Senior Information Line. And then she is also really a backbone of the organization because we are really essentially just about an all volunteer organization. And uh, so Nancy has a tremendous amount of experience of helping people s stay safe at home because as a home health expert and helping with in home, and I mean, you were doing, you were working with like physical therapy, occupational therapy, all the things that happen medically, uh, as well as just things that make good common sense. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. The other person that I want to uh, wave at and acknowledge, she's uh, been a great friend of helping seniors for quite a while now. She sits, she serves on our volunteer board of directors. Uh, if you've been here before, you've seen she's very faithful about helping us each time. Karen Wernland, and she has a company called Emerald Care Management. And maybe just for a second, before we even dive into it, Karen, do you mind hopping up and just giving like a minute about what you do in your background? And then Nancy, I'm going to ask you to do the same, and then we'll dive into Tracy's presentation. She did a great presentation, so we'll kind of read the slide, and then we'll have a discussion about it. So, Karen? Sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to have you here today, and I'm happy to be here. I am Karen Wernland. I have Emerald Care Management, and what I like to do is let the environment match my client. So whatever the client's needs are, be they just came out of physical therapy or just had an operation or living alone now and just aging in place, I want to make their home match their needs. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'm Nancy Deerdorf. Thank you for the great uh, uh, introduction. I'm very humbled by that. Um, spent 33 years as a registered nurse. Uh, I've worked hospitals, skilled nursing facilities. Uh, the majority of my career was spent in Medicare skilled home health care, where we provided nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy in folks' homes. So that was a great education. Um, Met Joe Steckler, as you said, back in the Brevard Alzheimer's days. Uh, I actually, my father was a client of Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation. And um, saw Joe at a meeting and went up to him to thank him for founding Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation. We got to know each other. And then when he branched out in 2011 and established Helping Seniors, asked me to come aboard as a volunteer board member. And we've sort of been a team ever since. Um, so... Um, uh, Joe's goal is to be an advocate for seniors. Um, he believes fully that seniors need a voice. He's been that voice for I don't know how many years now. He never did retire. He retired from the Navy and then just kept going as a senior advocate. So I'm very proud to be part of this organization. Uh, I think my experience as a nurse really helps. But actually, uh, I learn a lot from my callers. Uh, the more I do this job, the more I'm finding out what the needs of seniors in our community is. And our number one goal is to help seniors uh, live a better quality of life here in Brevard County and beyond. We get calls actually from uh, out of state and all over. Uh, a lot of times, as Carrie said, from adult children um, of seniors looking for help. No issue is too big or too small for us. And what we aim to do is connect seniors with resources that exist in Brevard County and sometimes beyond. <laughs> I've gotten calls from North Carolina and uh, it, there's a lot of seniors out there that aren't tech savvy, so I'll be their Google if I, I have to Google something. We have a really great large network of providers, organizations, and businesses that are senior friendly. And our goal is to con connect seniors to those organizations and resources to help seniors with whatever it is. 
We get calls that may be uh, considered more minor, like I need a good trusted handyman for my house to do maybe some minor. Who do you call? You don't really know. Um, and we get calls, sadly, from seniors that are at risk for or are actually homeless. I uh, spoke with a lady a couple months ago that was 80 years old sleeping in her car in the Walmart parking lot. So uh, we try to connect people with resources, trusted handyman, housing resources, and everything in between. We're not an emergency service or an urgent line, but we do uh, try to act quickly uh, depending on the situation for what a senior needs. And my mantra has kind of been, how do you know what you don't know? You don't. So I've even had callers saying, I, I, I need help. I, I, don't even, I don't even know where to begin or what to ask or what, what I need. And after talking with them, I can kind of sort of see where they're, what direction they're headed. And I'm, I'm like, okay, it sounds like you need this or that. Some seniors call me with a particular issue they want help with, and we find out there's many more issues. So we look at the person as a whole. Uh, and that's what we do. And we're very passionate about it. And our goal is for people to age with dignity uh, and age well. And the best way to do that is what your folks are doing today, which is to stay educated. When, when we retire from our jobs, we should not retire from life. We should always continue learning. Uh, it, it is what you know and who you know that gives you power. So the more you can learn, even if it's about a subject that you're not dealing with right now, it's good to learn because the last thing you want to do is wait until you have a crisis to find out about a situation. So you're doing the right thing for yourself is keep yourself educated on what's out there in case you need it. We hope you don't. Um, uh, what are they, what's the old saying? Uh, plan, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And that's what our goal of helping, your, uh, helping get you get your ducks in a row is all about, is helping you prepare for your aging plan so that when things creep up, and they will as we age, you're pr better prepared for that and you have more resources. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, one of the things that is uh, something to really, really know and remember is one of the reasons why we call it getting your ducks in a row is with the idea that um, just a little bit of planning make, makes a lot of sense. And we talked, it was funny, we were talking, we were out at a Helping Seniors car raffle appearance yesterday with the car and selling tickets for our fundraiser. And we got to this conversation that really while our theme this year has been about getting your ducks in a row, the other thing that probably is going to end up as our theme next year is going to be don't try this on your own. Because everybody's heard that expression Everybody's heard that expression, it takes a village to, to raise a child. Well, it's actually true. If we're going to really do the best that we can as seniors, it, ta it takes a team. We got, we got uh, a team that can help. And one of the things I keep learning, because I'm on the journey just like the rest of us are, that we're, we keep learning day by day. And I keep hearing every time I've had this conversation with every single elder law attorney I've ever spoken with, and there's three good law firms that are connected uh, who support the work of uh, helping seniors and many others that I know, and I've heard the same from every single one of them. They say, so often one of the saddest things they do is sit down with a family. Uh, somebody's had some situation that puts them in the hospital, and now they can't come home safely. And so all these major life decisions are having to be made for a person that can't say, well, this is what I would like to have happen. And the only alternative for that attorney becomes a very expensive guardianship, whereas if the person had just come in ahead of time and done $300 worth of paperwork or something, there would be a plan and the things would roll the way the person preferred rather than having a judge someplace and people saying, well, this is what needs to happen. So that's why our theme is let's, let's work on getting our ducks in a row. So we're going, with that, we're going to, um, that's like I said, that's been our theme this year. And this month is going to be about, uh, let's talk living safely at home. Most of us like our homes. We're comfortable there. It's why we choose to live there. But how many know that there's a time that we have to start to make some adjustments? If you're like us, you collect stuff over the years. So you have all this stuff, and your house may have started out somewhat empty, and it gets fuller and fuller and fuller. And I'm smiling because in our audience today is Marie Waddell with Clutter Be Gone. Wave, wave at everybody. She is an expert professional organizer. And I remember uh, seeing you do a presentation at a Golden Providers, and what she is able to do about helping us cut through clutter 
is unbelievable. Uh, you know, because the problem is we, when we look at stuff that's in our garage or in our house, we go, but we paid so much money for that, right? And then, of course, today the technology is more advanced and probably it's worth pennies on the dollar. And sometimes we need the help of somebody to just walk us through and help us think through things like that. We need stuff out of the house so that we can stay safe. We need to do the things into the house that will keep us safe. So that could be things like we're going to talk about uh, it could be like we said, grab bars, just looking, you know, do we have uh, uh, power cords on the floor that are trip hazards? Do we have loose rugs that are easy to fall over? Uh, do we need ramps in certain places? Um, what, do we have things in place like uh, Jennifer Helen with a company called Seniors Helping Seniors? She has, she's actually on our board as well. Her organization sells a product called Electronic Caregiver. It's like a it's like one. It's it's a much more sophisticated version of that help. I've fallen. I can't get up kind of thing because now the technology it can like take. I think she said it can take your blood pressure and all and get you know stuff to the doctor. And there's all kinds of so we can do this. We can stay safely at home. And so one of the persons that I want to uh, talk about today, Tracy Graff. She was not able to be here today, but she had sent ahead her PowerPoint. So this is with all due appreciation and respect. Tracy Graff is a registered nurse. She runs a company called Avid Home Care Services, and she provides in-home services. And I, she was going to try to be here today. She couldn't, but she sent us a great presentation. So I hate people who read PowerPoints and then, you know, because you can read for yourself. But I am going to read it, <laughs> and then we're going to discuss it is how we're going to try to do this because she did a really great, uh, great job on this. So she starts with some senior stats that we need to be aware of. Over 50 million senior citizens live in the U.S., so it's 16.5% of our population. Don't know if you knew this. I've talked about this before because it is one of our battle cries for seniors here in Brevard County. We live in a county that's 650,000 people or so. Fully, fully, we're way, way ahead of that national average. 25%, one in four of us, are over the age of 65. And if you want to use AARP, which sends you a membership card as soon as you turn 50, it's literally half of the county is over 50. So one of my favorite like little plug lines for why we exist as Helping Seniors in Brevard is I say in this county, you're a senior, love and care for a senior, God willing, you're gonna become a senior sooner or later. So you might as well take advantage of all this. This is an interesting statistic, 10,000 uh, seniors, uh, well, we gain 10,000 new seniors, 65 plus every single day. And I remember a corollary statistic about that, that we talked about the fact that um, not only is 10,000 people a day turning 65, but it's like one every 7.8 seconds when you divide it out. I mean, that's how fast the senior population is growing. And if you're here in Florida, you know it grows <laughs> really fast because we're a state people want to move to. So pe where there's this huge influx of seniors. They're retiring up north. They say, I want to come down south. I like the sunshine. I like the beaches. I want to be uh, in good weather year-round. So we get this huge influx of people. And as you've kept up with through COVID and everything else, this state is just exploding. They're putting up new places to live all over the place. What's going on right here is on Beachside, this construction that causes us to have to park elsewhere. They're, and there will be parking back here once they finish this. But what they're talking about, this is uh, independent living is what they're creating over here. So the place is just growing and you go, how can they absorb, how, how can this county absorb all these people? This is the infrastructure that's coming to serve those. So, but there's another statistic that I thought was funny, and we talked about this 20 years ago, because I, I would always talk to young people about this. I would say, you know, they would say, well, old people, they should know how to get up, take care of themselves by now and all that. And I'd say, do you know that in 1900, 1900, if you turned 50, statistically, you were dead? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because just what life expectancy was at that time. Today, if you turn 67, you have another 18 years just average life expectancy. And so what happens is they keep figuring things out. They make things safer, medical advances. So we need to be planning for a long time. When I talk to the people that run organizations like Zon Beachside, it's not unusual for them to have people in their hundreds who are still doing everything 100% on their own. In fact, we were talking last month when Chris Morse, who runs the Helping Seniors Travel Club, when we did our first Helping Seniors Cruise, the oldest person that went sailing with us was a 92-year-old lady 
who's traveling by herself? So, I mean, so this is all about planning. It's not saying like, okay, we're giving up on anything. But look at this. So 5% of older adults age 65 live in a nursing home. Of those, 50% are 85 and older, 35% 75 to 84, and 15% are between 65 and 74. So that means, by definition, we prefer to age at home. So this is the things that Tracy had put on the list for us to talk about today. What are the big four? And she said fall prevention, medication management, safety and security, personal care needs. So let's, let's kind of dive into that. So fall prevention is the big challenge. I don't know if you've been keeping up. Joe publishes his articles in Hometown News every week or two. And uh, he just recently did one about falls because for him, He's 88, and he's trying to be very careful, but he's finding that he's having some challenges that he wants to be even more careful about. So look at these numbers. Almost 3 million people over 65 hospitalized for fall-related injuries. For It's hip fractures, head injuries, things like that. And so um, the advice that Tracy is giving us here is that if we put assistive aids, grab bars, ramps, anything that high-profile toilets, non-slip strips in your... Uh, tub or on your stairs, all that's going to uh, be helpful. She suggests putting a shower head for a handheld one, uh, maybe a shower chair so that you're not going to fall in the, uh, in the bathroom. Uh, we already kind of hit on this one. Remove the throw rugs, and if you need a cane or walker, please use it. And I got to tell you this, years ago, um, it was actually a gentleman who worked, so Nancy was, was with a company at that time called Gentiva, and there was a gentleman, Chris Marriott, who uh, did a show with Joe Steckler like 10 years ago, and it was specifically on falls and balance and ambulation. That show is still on the, on the website, and it's 100% accurate and effective for today. So if you want to hunt that one down, look for that. Just, you'll, you'll just put in uh, Chris Marriott, Helping Seniors Falls, and you'll see some of the things, because they were really getting into the depth. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm too proud. I don't want to use a walker because it means I'm giving up. No, it's going to keep you safe and, and, and living, uh, living long. Make sure to get your eyes checked annually. Vision changes can precipitate a fall. So uh, do, you, do one of you guys want to hop up and add some, add some to this? Yeah. I'll add some about falls. I have experience of that uh, with in my not only in my career but personally. Um, I myself was a caregiver as well, so I was on the caregiving side, and then I became a caregiver for multiple family members. So on falls, a couple of things I want to mention is a lot of times when we see falls in the home, it's during the night when us older folks are getting up to go to the restroom. Um, why is that? Well. Uh, Older folks, when, when we're younger, uh, our kidneys process uh, are, are, are more active during the day. Uh, so when we go to sleep, we typically, as a younger person, sleep through the night. As we get older, our kidneys become more active at night. Not sure if you knew that. So we get the urge to go to the bathroom uh, in the middle of the night. So we wake up sometimes abruptly from sleep, and folks get up in the dark, and they either trip, can't see their way to the restroom, they're the bathroom, or there's a thing called orthostatic hypotension. Anybody ever hear of it? Orthostatic hypotension, and we've probably all experienced it, young and old. Uh, if, if we get up abruptly from laying down or sitting in a chair and you ever go, ooh, wow, I got a head rush, and you got a little dizzy, that's orthostatic hypotension. And that's where our blood pressure makes an abrupt change and it drops, causing that feeling of woozy. So we, a lot of times folks will go from a, a just sleeping soundly to waking up to go to the bathroom and they get out of bed and they jump up and then they're on their way with or without an assistive device and they fall on the way to the restroom. That's very, very common. So it's very important uh, particularly as we get older, but for really everyone, that when you uh, awake to use the restroom in the middle of the night, that you sit on the side of the bed. Give your body 30 seconds or so to adjust, then stand up at the side of the bed with your bed behind you, okay, in case you need to sit back down, and give yourself another 30 seconds. Then make your way to the restroom. Lighting in a hallway or leading to the restroom is very important. Yes, a lot of us don't like lights on when we sleep, but at least have a light 
wherever your restroom is, illuminating where you need to go. And your eyes also need to take a, a moment to adjust from waking from uh, sleep to seeing that light. So give yourself a minute. I know you want to be in a rush. Some, some of us are in a rush when we need to go in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to be frank. Uh, nobody wants an accident. Uh, if they got to go, they got to go. But rushing could lead to so much more. So it's very important you don't rush. Um, so those are, those are a couple things I see a lot with falls in the home. Um, the other thing is assistive devices. I, I really want to uh, point that out. There are those who refuse to use one because of dignity. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I, I mean, really, we've all been on the other side of the fence. If you don't use a cane or a walker, nobody looks at someone using a cane or a walker and thinks, oh, there's a person using a cane or a walker. So I know it's a dignity thing, but then there are those who use them, but the majority of the population do not use assistive devices correctly. There is a way to use a cane properly, and there is a way to use a walker properly. How many times have you been out and you saw somebody using a walker and they're carrying it? Or they're dragging it, right? They're scooting it like ice skating with the uh, roller skating with the walker or sometimes the walkers have wheels and they're skating. A walker wasn't designed for that. A walker was designed to be picked up, placed, and then stepped into. Picked up, placed, and then stepped into. Sorry, but, uh, sorry about the sound. Uh, so anyway, those are a couple of things that uh, I saw a lot of times in home health uh, that really contributed to falls. So lighting, giving yourself a moment on the side of the bed before you abruptly stand up, and using assistive devices correctly. And if you have an assistive device and you insist on not using it, at least get it out of the way of your path because how many times have I seen a senior fall over their assistive device that is designed to help them not fall? So that's a couple things about falls. It is probably the number one, that and medication management, uh, the number one uh, safety risk issue about staying at home. Uh, throw rugs, as Carrie mentioned, is huge. People don't want to give up their decor. They like their rug. They've had it there forever. Not just throw rugs, but area rugs, particularly with a thick pile or uh, uh, fray, decorative fray that can get caught. Uh, those are things that should be considered to be swapped out. You want a smooth, non-bumpy uh, surface that won't trip you up. And the other thing is proper footwear. Uh, my family, uh, I was a caregiver for a loved one, uh, and she happened to love those little ballerina type slippers because they were light and she could have r roller skated in those across her wood floor. So huge slipping, walking around in stocking feet, not good. If anybody's ever been in a hospital or rehab, you know they have those socks with the grips on the bottom. Very important. Stocking feet, not good. Bare feet, not good. Um, so it's very important that people wear proper footwear. And there is cute ladies, there's cute proper footwear out there anymore. Uh, footwear is becoming uh, very popular, proper footwear, and they're designing it so they're not ugly. Um, so it's really, really important uh, that you consider those things. Fall, if I could say anything about staying at home safely, that would be it, would, uh, related to falls. I'm very well. I had my hip replaced four years ago, so proper shoes are definitely in the top of my list. But one thing I did want to share is as we age, our bones become brittle. And the density in our bones, just each day, little by little. And for me, I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes when I go down or go up, I crack and creak. But that's just, you know, so rugs in the home. And I want to share a story, a short story. I do yoga a lot. And I have a very good friend, Donna, who takes yoga with me. And she had some plush carpet still in her, she just moved to the area, still in her apartment. And she actually tripped over the corner of it because there was nothing there to hold it in place. And she broke her shoulder in three places. And so she had not only go to the hospital, not only have surgery, not only have to adjust being at home, she missed out on six weeks of yoga a little bit of prevention. The skids, they make them now. They're even pretty, they're attractive. They make the rugs that um, will help you get out of the shower safely is the main place to have a nice non-skid rug. I actually don't even keep mine down except when I'm taking a shower. And I just wanted to share that with you.
So uh, again, our appreciation to Tracy Graff for putting together this presentation. And with her apologies, she really wanted to be here to be able to, to share this directly. So thank you guys for stepping in and, and helping, because you guys are better at this than me. But the next area, remember there was four areas. We already talked about the first one. This is medication errors. And um, this says that 6 to 12% of all senior hospital stays are a result of that. Uh, so uh, they say most commonly that cause admission are anticoagulants or blood thinners. And so uh, I remember this studying this, and I learned a word years ago called polypharmacy. And it means that, um, you know, the doctor says, well, we need to give you this because of one thing. But if the doctor doesn't know that you're on this other thing because you got that from your maybe your heart doctor or somebody else, you know, that's why it's so important to have your pharmacy in one place, right? Because the pharmacist knows, like, well, if you're taking this and this, you need to be alert to these things that happen. Because, you know, they, have, they give you, like, those five sheets of paper every time you pick up a, a prescription and it tells you all the side effects. Well, that's the side effects from that one alone, right? Not when you put it together with whatever else you're taking. And you really need the help of a, of a good pharmacist to help and particularly make sure your doctor knows everything. And that's why most of the time when you go to the doctor, isn't that like one of the first things they do as they're checking you in? We have you taking this, this, this. Is there anything else you're taking about we need to know about? So it, it, what she says is consider having your medications prepackaged by the uh, pharmacy. It's usually delivered biweekly and can prevent the need for refills or running out of medications, a very big help when it comes, well, there she uses the word, polypharmacy, as all meds must be verified with prescribing MD before being added to the pack. So it makes sense, uh, I think, in a lot of ways to be careful about that, um, because I guess some of the things that you guys are talking about really have to, do you want to add to this one, somebody? Uh, polypharmacy is actually defined as four or more medications that someone's taking. And back when I was running... Um, uh, Gentiva Home Health back in the day, uh, the average medications that our home health patients were on were 12. That's average. 12 prescription drugs a day. That's average. That means some were taking 5, some were taking 18. <laughs> um, that is some of their medication regimens that I saw on the patients were full-time jobs. Just to dole it out and just to take it. So uh, that takes a lot of time, and the chances for error are really, really huge. So that the first thing that I would recommend for seniors is that seniors have uh, their medications checked by a pharmacist. Most pharmacists are very, very willing to provide a free check of interactions. So you tell the pharmacist what you're on, or better yet, bring them there, and they can run an uh, interaction check on all of these. Um, they will tell you if you, they will be able to tell you if you're taking duplicate medications, because a lot of people have their primary doctor and then you have a specialist. Uh, Sometimes I've seen people on the same exact medication prescribed by two different doctors with two different names, because there's the generic name and then there, for instance, uh, uh, I've never seen it with Coumadin, but Coumadin, uh, Tracy mentions anticoagulants. Coumadin is the brand name for warfarin. Um, that's regulated usually by one doctor, so I've never seen two of those. But I have seen a couple of different blood pressure pills that act the same in the body. And it doesn't mean you can't be on more than one blood pressure pill, because sometimes blood pressure pills, uh, one will work one way in the body and another one so some people do need to be on more than one medication for the same diagnoses because they work in different ways. But I have seen people on the same exact medication. One's uh, generic, one is um, uh, the, the name brand. Or people stop taking their medication, they save them in case they need them because they're so expensive, and they put themselves back on something that their doctor has no idea they started taking again. So there are interactions. Um, you know, they say prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that's for sure uh, the truth. I'm, not tell I'm here to tell you, take your medication as prescribed. Make sure all of your doctors know every prescription and over-the-counter and herbal supplement that you're on, and a pharmacist will look at all of that for free. Where you can, where you're able, talk with your doctor about decreasing and coming off some medications. 
uh, people tend to, the people that are on the least amount of medications tend to fare better because we're, we're just so, uh, you know, I had a, a doctor friend of mine years ago when I was in home health and I said, you know, not you personally, but you doctors, you know, somebody comes to you and, and you prescribe, 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 prescribe. I mean, we got to get folks off of this many medications. When you need it, you need it for sure. But how many medications are out there? And then you get side effects and then there's a pill for the side effect. And so he said to me, he said, Nancy, let me tell you something. He said, when a patient comes to see us doctors, they're expecting a, to leave with the prescription. Some of them insist on it. I, I feel this, or I, I, I feel this sort of way. They want a prescription. And I said, well, we need to do a better education of the public then to let them know. So there's medications certainly that we don't need. You see them advertised on TV. If you need them, you need them. There's certain medications that people depend on to live healthy and well. But there's certain medications out there that are just not necessary. So my best advice to you would be to have your pharmacist review all your prescription medications that you take. And if you're taking an old one that's not currently prescribed, include that. All your prescription, all your over-the-counters, and all your herbal supplements and vitamins because those can have interactions. Have the pharmacist review and then talk with your doctor or doctors. Make sure they all know what you're putting in your body and see if you can reduce the number of medications you're on and see if there are uh, perhaps uh, they say food, food can be poison or food can be medicine depending on what we're putting in our bodies. See if there's not an alternative uh, non-prescription way that you, can, um, that, that you can put into your body to regulate things. Diabetes, uh, certainly, you know, diabetics need insulin for sure or an oral medication, but there are people that are not insulin-dependent diabetics that have reversed that with weight loss, blood pressure control, that kind of thing. So uh, talk to your doctor first. Certainly don't, uh, don't go online and look up how I got off my medications all on my own. It's dangerous, but certainly have a physician and a pharmacist review everything that you're putting into your mouth. I would actually want to just add, advocate for yourself. It's your decision to know the knowledge about your medicines. They're going to help you. You need them. Nobody's going to look at you badly if you take 15 or whatever you take. Just you're the one that needs to know about them. How do they affect you? Yes, your doctor is very important. And I would have to add that I am all over this, having your, your meds taken to your pharmacy and have them verified and prescribed and add to a pack so you can't get it wrong. My father, when he was living, I cared for him for eight years. And in our, we had one cabinet that was nothing but medicine. And it was very difficult. He wanted to do it himself. And it was very difficult to, I kind of had to go behind him and not really be noticed that, yes, he took this, yes, he took that, until I finally said, it's m up to me to know about these medicines and does he really need them? And let's go to his doctor and let's find out if, there, if we could maybe get rid of a couple. So knowledge is power. Uh, interestingly, uh, this one is kind of an interesting statistic that Tracy Graff from Avid Home Care is giving us. National Fire Incident Reporting Agency showed that people over 65 are two and a half more times likely to die in a fire, and over 85, it's four times more likely. So a few things that um, she talks about uh, maybe to help us in this area, um, this is, I guess we're down into kind of general home security, uh, keeping all doors and windows locked, including the garage. Uh, consider a medical alert system. We talked about that. An easy to install bidet toilet seat can maintain independence with personal care and hygiene. Never share personal information over the phone or internet. It's a whole variety of topics, but one of the things that we have to be aware of when we're aging at home is the fact that uh, we don't really have a gatekeeper. Somebody comes to the front door, somebody calls us on the telephone. We are the front line of taking care of ourselves. And we've done some things over the years with uh, our state attorney, Phil Archer. He's a real serious uh, uh, force in trying to fight uh, the fight the things that come up with senior scams and things like that. He publishes a newsletter every single month about you know what they're seeing 
from the state attorney's office about what these jokers are up to. And so it's important to stay on top of that. Um, our sheriff, Sheriff Wayne Ivey, is another one who really uh, works. There's a gentleman now who uh, he's run Operation Lifesaver for years. His name is Joe Down. He's now with the Brevard, officially with the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, and he is there to help us fight all these kind of things. So on this topic of just trying to stay at home, Marie, you probably are a wealth of, of, of good information just because of what you do, uh, knowing how to look at a senior's home and help them figure out how to keep, how to keep things uh, not only um, happy and kind of clutter-free, but also for your own personal safety. Do either one of you guys want to add something on this topic? Yeah, Marie. This is Marie Waddell. Her company is Clutter Be Gone. One of the things I found out, I had two clients this happened to, if you are not sure, reach out to somebody, reach out to an expert, ask them, never give anyone any credit cards, no money, don't go out and buy gift cards. If somebody says, whatever, I'll get back to you. Call them, call me, call somebody, and say, this is the, this is the call I got. I'm dealing with real smart people. I had a, a banker, retired banker. I was going down helping her with her home office, with her paperwork. I went in one day and she said, I did something terrible. I said, you can tell me what happened. So we sat down and we talked about it. She was having computer problems. My other client that ended up in this, but this is worse. Everybody has computer problems. You're not the only one, okay? If anybody calls you out of the blue, and tells you you have computer problems, it's a scam, hang up. You do not need to be polite to them, just hang up. Block that phone number on your phone. This woman, smart woman, a banker, that was her career, ended up, long story short, $8,000 in gift cards. She had to read the numbers to this person on the phone, okay? Ask for help before you give anybody a dollar simple as that we're all here to help you thanks maria we're gonna keep we're gonna keep plugging ahead staying in your own own home until the end of your life is achievable with an aging plan if you can do it safely and so uh that kind of let me let me toss it back to you we got five minutes or so left and then we'll we'll be around for questions and things but uh can you you guys kind of give you a minute to tie a bow around everything we've been talking about <laughs> Sure, we kind of skipped a little bit over fire danger, um, but I, I, Tracy is very right in her slide presentation as far as seniors being more likely to die in a fire. So what's important? Smoke detectors, we've all heard that. Uh, how, how many, this is rhetorical, don't answer. How many of you have undone the battery because you get that tweeting noise and you can't stand it? <laughs> better, better get the tweet, better the tweeting noise. Don't, don't take your batteries out. And they recommend that you check your uh, smoke detectors at th when the, the clocks change. So that's twice a year, and that's what's recommended. So daylight savings time, and then when we go back, uh, that's a good time to check them. We don't want you on a ladder. We don't want you on a ladder. There are, uh, there are fire departments that will come out and uh, check your smoke detectors. There's also handymen. I have, we have those resources at Helping Seniors, those honest companies that won't rip you off that um, will charge you a fair price to do those kind of things. So uh, very important. And then the other thing to consider is a clear path out of your home should there be a fire, uh, a clear path out of your home. Um, so clutter, getting back to clutter, making sure that exits, that you have at least a couple of exits in your home. Um, I think uh, I touched on uh, cybersecurity and ripoffs and schemes in my June article. Um, if you feel like you're the victim, you certainly can give us a call. There are phone numbers I can give you to report that. One is to the state attorney's office. Um, and uh, it's very important that you do re re uh, report that. And Maria, back to, to your point, there are all sorts of scams out there. Uh, there are scams uh, about uh, gift cards. Uh, one of the most famous ones now is people calling people and saying your, and they have a little bit of info. Your grandson is in jail, and I can get him out, but I need you to forward me the money. And people have been ripped off that way. You name it, um, you name it, uh, there's, a, there's a scam for it. Um, I guess um, the bow on the package of aging safely at home, yes, it is possible to age in your home 
um, I, you know, for the rest of your life. But there's things you have to consider in order to do that. Uh, some people choose assisted living, such as beautiful Zon Beachside uh, and other assisted livings. Other, other folks uh, want to uh, age in place at home. But your home as it exists now may not be what you need in five years, 10 years, 20 years. People are living very far beyond uh, the age of 65. So it's important to consider things like adapting your home. For instance, when you get there, and most of us will if we live long enough, how will I get into my shower tub? How will I step over that? Uh, and then if you slip, God forbid, that is, that's quite the injury, including a head injury. So uh, considering home adaptation, things like, and there are companies out there that will convert a tub shower to a, a zero thre threshold shower. Um, so that's important. Are your doorways in your home large enough to accommodate a wheelchair? if you need one, or a walker. Um, Non-slip services, uh, so if you have flooring or rugs, making sure you don't have tripping hazards. All of these things are important. And then things to consider, there's a thing called activities of daily living. That's what we call it in, uh, in, the, in medical terms. Um, activities of daily living, what are they? Those are the things we do every day that we take for granted, cooking, Preparing a, uh, something to reheat in the microwave. Uh, getting, well, I'll start in the morning. We get up, we go to the bathroom, we brush our teeth. Uh, we may take a full shower or we may just, uh, you know, we put on our makeup if we're ladies. Uh, we, uh, men, you, you may have to shave every day or every so often. Um, so we get ourselves ready. Then we get ourselves dressed. And then we have to make ourselves breakfast and then lunch and then dinner. Okay, the food has to come from somewhere, so you have to go out and get the food or have the food delivered. Uh, then you have laundry you got to do. Um, then you have that pesky uh, uh, smoke detector that's beeping. How do you get up there and change the battery? All of these things that we take for granted when we're younger and when we're able, or even older and able, we have to think about who will take care of that if I can't do that. Sometimes that means bringing in outside help, whether it's a private duty home health agency, whether it's Clutter Be Gone with Maria. Um, it takes a village, just as Carrie said, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village uh, to uh, help our, our seniors. Uh, and all of us, we, we need each other. So you're going to have to plan for that, not only that you're going to need it, but financially. People will say, well, it's the cheapest option to stay at home. And this article addresses, uh, in, in June and July, I touched on it, because July, our theme is going to be uh, living beyond your home. But I still addressed, what if you want to live in your home because there's expenses involved? You're going to need a new roof every 15 years or so. Who takes care of your lawn maintenance? Do you have pest control? Um, something as simple as, how do I get my trash from my kitchen out to the curb? if somebody can't walk well, all the things. So start thinking about all of these things and how you would do the things you do now maybe easily. If you plan to stay at home, think about functionality of it and also the finances of it. Can you afford it? And I guess what I could say the most, and I wrote an article on this, if I could say anything, is that we humans are meant to be social creatures. And I've had family members too that they're loners, they like hanging out, and they're perfectly fine, they're not lonely, they like hanging out by themselves, they don't like crowds, they're not that social. We need each other. Maybe you're not the social butterfly, but it pays to know people. So stay involved, whether that's your church or religious organization, whether it's a senior center, whether it's neighbors or friends, whether it's a club, whether it's an organization, a uh, volunteer, stay connected to people because people who know people are the people that get help. I see uh, many churches uh, that help uh, their parishioners and, and even others that don't attend there. Those are the people that say, oh, well, I don't, I don't have any family left. You know, maybe they're 90 and they're living on their own, but they're like, I turned to my church and this is what happened. Stay connected. It is not, we are not meant to be by ourselves on this earth. 
So as much as you may enjoy alone time, if you're one of those kind of folks, make sure you still stay connected to other people. These are the people, statistically proven, people who are social and stay connected to others, live happier lives, and it's connected to health and wellness and a longer life. So stay connected to people. Thank you, Nancy. And Karen? Just one thing that I wanted to add to all of this, my little bow actually has to do with um, what Clutter Be Gone ha had said about the scam, about the gift cards. I had a personal friend who lost $18,000. Her sister got involved and lost $2,000 until she finally realized it was a scam. So it's out there. And these people, they're well-educated, beautiful people. But so I would want to add one thing to what uh, Nancy said. Please reach out. We're all here to help each other. And as far as the, the telephones are concerned, on my cell phone, this is what I do. And yes, it takes a little bit of time. I put every single person's phone number in my cell phone. No matter what it is, I, if it's the handyman down the street, he's in my phone, any of them. If it's my pastor at my church, he's in my phone. And then if my phone says to me, unknown caller, I don't answer it. If they want something, they'll leave a voicemail. So at my bow, just reach out. Thank you, Nancy Deerdorf and Karen Warnland. And if you guys will give me literally 180 seconds, I'm just going to let you know that next month, next month is, um, we're gonna, this is going to be our topic. So this month was staying safely at home. Next month, we're going to talk about if you decide you're going to go past your current home. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to look at assisted living or something like that. It could be you just want to downsize. Maybe you have a two-story home. Makes sense to be in a one-story home. So that's what's coming next month, last Monday of the month. We encourage you to come back and join that. Uh, this is going to be fun. We're going to invite Debbie Beard, who is with um, Senior Real Estate uh, Services, but also has experience as an administrator for skilled nursing facilities, assisted living. So she's going to be our speaker. The next thing is, this is our fundraiser. If you haven't heard about it, it's the Helping Seniors Car Raffle. Buy a ticket, help a senior. <laughs> and you might win a car out of it. So this is coming up October 29th is our grand drawing. Uh, somebody picks one of those brand new cars uh, from the Boniface Hires uh, family of dealerships. So it's a Challenger, Camaro, Sportage, or Mazda Miata. The way it works is one ticket is $25, five for $100 donation to Helping Seniors. This is our sixth annual car raffle. It winds up your ticket. You don't have to be present to win, but if you're in town and you can um, make it, your ticket is admit one to Mark Pylock's American Muscle Car Museum where he's got like $80 million worth of cards, cars out there, and he springs for everything. So the beer, the wine, the soda, the sandwiches, he provides that. It's just a great blessing to us, and this is really what helps us fund what we do is you're, you're getting involved in supporting the work of Helping Seniors. The other thing, the last thing I wanted to mention here today was um, the, that uh, if you were here last month, we, did, we have the dates now. We were, we were looking at something, and then Chris found a better deal with a little bit more time on a brand new ship from MSC called MSC Meraviglia. So that's the ship. We're going sailing January 23, 20, sorry, January 2023. Uh, there's a two-night sailing. It's a weekend sailing on July 6th and a seven-night sailing on, sorry, January 6th, seven-night sailing on January 8th. And some people are going to go for the whole, full nine days. So it's the same idea, just these dates and a brand new ship. And we're excited about it. all right in and out of Port Canaveral. So you're sailing with friends. And uh, just a thank you to Zon Beachside for uh, hosting us here. We're appreciative of them. And thank you guys for being here today. Really appreciate you uh, joining us today. And I uh, hope you have a great week. Thanks.